These five child prodigy kids will make you feel super dumb. Ah, childhood. It's a magical time when you're still allowed to be a non-productive drain of society and not feel guilty about it. But while most of us spent our childhood staring at cartoons over bowels of sugary breakfast cereal, some kids were more focused on things like composing symphonies, performing surgery, or getting nominated for the Nobel Prize. In today's video, we shall be taking a look at some child prodigies who, to put it mildly, make us look like worthless turds. Before we begin, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and also turn on the bell for the latest notifications. Make sure you never miss another video. With that said, let's begin. First up, Akrit Jaswal, child surgeon. This kid, India's youngest ever university student and physician, makes Doogie Hauser look like an unmotivated slob. Oh, that's cute, you say. They're letting him play doctor. Play nothing, this kid was performing operations when he was seven. He also has quite a pinch sized ego on him. People saw my potential and wanted to help me excel in life, Akrit had said. I think they're of above average intelligence but not as clever as me. Doesn't it just make you want to smack the little scamp? Although if Akrit's current work on a cure for cancer turns out to be successful, he can spend all day shouting about how smart he is into a golden megaphone for all we care. That said, Akrit has also claimed he's going to make a dinosaur, so we'll believe he has the cure for cancer when he rides down the street with it on a stegosaurus. What we were doing at that age. Through painstaking research held during recess, we were discovering the difference between boys and girls. Beside the other size of debilitating cootie levels, of course, also we knew that the Ninja Turtle band-aids totally made our scrap knees heal faster. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart Some of you may have heard of this guy. Mozart is not only one of the greatest composers of all time, but probably history's most recognized child protege. There's not an elementary school music room that doesn't have a poster of Mozart uplisting his early accomplishments in order to shame the kids into playing hot cross buns on their recorders instead of using them as lightsabers or spitball cannons. Mozart learned to play the piano at the age of four, composed his first pieces at five and at eight, an age when most of us probably couldn't even name half a dozen musical instruments of asked. Mozart wrote his first symphony. Young Mozart was quite the little celebrity, but sadly the fate of child stars was about the same then as it is now as his tumultuous life would end up lasting a mere 35 years. It's proof the universe is fundamentally unfair that Mozart died so young, while well, today we still have to put up with Danny Bonaduce. That'll teach us to invent a cure for syphilis. What we were doing at that age? We didn't have time to be composing symphony since we were too busy constructing our own instruments. William James Sidis some consider William J. Sidis the smartest man who have ever lived with an estimated IQ of 250 to 300. For the sake of comparison, you only have to have an IQ of 136 to be a mere run-of-the-mill genius, and your average person is somewhere in the 85 to 115 range. Surprisingly, pictures of Sidis reveals that his head was only marginally bigger than average and not a throbbing translucent beach ball-sized dome. Word is, he wasn't even capable of shooting psychic death rays. Sidis could read at 18 months, had written four books and was fluent in eight languages at age seven, gave a lecture at Harvard at nine and entered Harvard at 11. Despite his brilliance in the fields of mathematics and cosmology, we do have to question Sidis's intelligence in one key area as he took a vow of celibacy his entire life and likely died a virgin. It's unfortunate because nothing gets the ladies hot and bothered like a dissertation of the theory of cosmological reversibility. Hell, Sidis could probably get a girl's panties off from across the room with the sheer power of his mind. A sad waste. At his age, we were probably needing 55,378,008 into our calculator so many times that we burned it into the screen. H.P. Lovecraft One of the most influential horror writers of the 20th century, Howard Phillips Lovecraft learned to read at the age of two and was writing complex poetry by the age of six. We'd be especially impressed if he found a rhyme for Cthulhu when not reading or writing. Lovecraft spent his childhood amassing enough crushing trauma that writing stories about the incomprehensible alien horror of the universe probably felt like a light-hearted escape. Young Lovecraft was sickly and spent much of his childhood in bed, being told horror stories by his eccentric grandfather Whipple, whose ridiculous name was about as funny as Lovecraft's childhood got. Lovecraft's parents were proof lunatics attract as his father was a syphilitic psychotic and his mother was a chronically depressed, frail, ghostly pale woman, and she was likely being slowly poisoned by arsenic-based syphilis treatments. His father would die paralyzed in an asylum, and his grandfather would follow leaving the family destitute and then his mother would go passing away in the same hospital Lovecraft's father died in to complete the tragedy trifecta. 
If all this wasn't bad enough every night when Lovecraft went to bed, the very shadows around him would form into the monstrous black tentacles of a long-lost burning-eyed god who would try to drag his body down to the depths of hell itself. Kim Ung Yong This Korean super genius might just be the smartest guy alive today. He's recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as having the highest IQ of anyone on the planet. Granted, his record doesn't quite have the cachet of other Guinness records like world's longest midget toss or oldest male stripper, but it's still fairly impressive. Kim entered university as a physics student at the age of three. We're not sure how many parties he got invited to at that age, but word has it nobody shot against a juice like Kim Ong Yong. Later, at the ripe old age of seven, Kim was invited to the United States by NASA to study. Although, to be honest, we're guessing he was invited because they suspected him of being an alien. Thanks for watching.